Hello, Rim the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to be an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against mystery Babylon is growing all over the world. This is episode number 427. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hello, all our friends. It's good to be in here again today and talking about all the things that are going on in my, oh my. my, my goodness. Um, it's, I, it's almost impossible to keep up with it all. Well, it's it's really moving at a fast pace, that's for sure. And I'm, you know, I cease to be amazed at, at what's being revealed. And, and this is from somebody that's known what they've been doing in the back for decades. Um, but it's it's really getting serious. And my hope is, is the more that is revealed, um, because that's what God's doing. He's revealing everything. He's revealing what a corrupt judicial system we have. But I'm going to speak on top of that, yeah. that God said he is, he's going to turn this thing around. He's going he's to rip the injustice. And I'm going to keep declaring that over on top of all these things that are being revealed because God's revealing them for a purpose. And, you know, it's almost hard keeping on top of everything. Several things that have come out this week. One of them, you know, we had the tragic shooting up in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. and, And the Democrats are talking about how that there's no laws on the books that that don't allow teenagers to have firearms yet there's all kinds of laws those they broke the law in missouri you have to be 21 years old to buy or or carry uh and so all all the rhetoric they're doing uh somehow now they have forgotten that criminals are criminals because they break the law Mm -hmm. okay Uh, i also saw this week that there is a proposal in congress in the senate a new bill and uh, i can't remember the exact title but it's something about so that people cannot have the, build their own private military act or something like that, and which really sounds good. We don't want you know people building their own private, like a like a bad militia or something. But Mary, the very first thing in it they go after is we can't allow all these churches to have concealed carry yeah. weapons in their churches. No, yeah, they don't want that. And and the reason for that is they want more mass shootings. They want churches to be vulnerable because out of every one shooting. That has that has tragically happened in America. There have been at least fifteen to twenty that were immediately stopped. Now they don't report on those <laughs> because because you had they, someone that was trained inside that church to protect. That's right. And so we we need to understand that there's there's things going on that do not have our best interest. There is another agenda, and Mary, the American people are at the bottom of their to do list. Well, we're going to have to. We're going to have to start looking at things. My my hope is that these things are coming so quickly, uh, and just at a at a rampage almost, that it will shock people enough to make them look. Yes. Because part part of what the enemy's done, and you've talked about this so many times, is this. Um, Techno and do sorcery, a slumber that everybody's in to where where you just don't look at things. You just keep going. And, and, and I think we've been established in a pattern of doing things. Um, and we don't even don't even know, you know, what the occult can do. We've not been taught. One of the things I was thinking about this week, <clears throat> because I had to go, you know, back when your mom was, we had to put her in the nursing home. I had to go through things. And she had a lot of quilts that she'd made through the years. And, uh, you know, on a lot of quilts, if you look at the magazines that have quilts and things like that, there's almost always like a star pattern and things yeah. like that. Um, Eight-pointed stars, fives, you know, whatever. And uh, I was talking with a friend one time of mine that asked me a question about that because I love quilts, and I I just think they're so beautiful. Um, but I took – I started taking those off of our bed – uh, even though your mom had made them, because of those points, I thought, you know, is it possible, since this is an occult structure used, that there it is on top of us at night, 
could could and and Open to me us up to astral projection well, or anything I, else. Well, I don't know what all is possible with it, but I wasn't willing to take a chance. But if you look at just everything, hobbies, everything, there's something in there, you know, trying to to just get one more little place. And so, um, I just I just think that that blocks. I think quilts are beautiful, but I think there are patterns you can use without those stars. And, and I think that would be important. I think we need we need to realize that the entire world system. You know, and I've had a friend write a book that, you know, America is Babylon. America right now is one of the leading things that Babylon is using. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you something. They're switching over to China. And China is now the uh, the model now for what, what Babylon wants to be. And, I mean, tech, with technocracy and everything else. When we forget that we're living in enemy territory, we forget that we're living in, in a hostile territory and that we're of another kingdom. And we start, we start having this love relationship with the world. We place ourselves and future generations in danger. We do. The kingdom of God is distinct from everything of the world. Well, it says in James 4.4, 4, it says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And in Matthew Henry's commentary, it says the former chapter speaks of envying one another. So he's talking about James chapter 3. As the great spring of strifes and contentions, this chapter speaks of a lust after worldly things and a setting too great a value upon worldly pleasures and friendships as that which carried their divisions to a shameful height. And, I mean, we've, we've been taught this. And, you know, um, if you just think of how societies went, it's it's just getting you in groups. I think yeah. that's why, like Freemasons, were able to uh, have so many members early on. Is is I think it's just a natural thing that God made men to to come together, and yeshiva, <laughs> and so that's the world's alternative to these things. And people don't have a clue what that opens them up to. And you know, <clears throat> excuse me, I was listening this morning, and. Uh, there, there's a recent survey that was done. I heard this on Infowars. I was just looking through headlines and things. It said uh, there was a man that did a, a survey between December of 23 and January 24. And in this survey, 70% of the embalmers saw these crazy-looking blood clots. If yeah, you guys have white. ever looked online, it's just a white, fibrous thing that they're pulling out of the the you know, the uh, arteries. The vessels, and, yeah, arteries. Uh, and then it also said 50% of the dead they've noticed in the uh, the embalmers have have those clots. And it mysteriously appeared after COVID. Mm -hmm. And so that's, you know, we've always had the talk about what they've done to pervert DNA through the jabs, through um, genetically modified food. And, and I think that it's it's going to get much more intense than that. But that's why, guys, we can we can trust our God that is able to do anything to remove those things. I've been praying over people ever since that, you know, they started finding out what was going on with the, with the shots that God would just dissolve those things. He can, you know, he can, he can do anything. And, and to me, this is a weapon formed against us. So especially if you're a Christian and you have, you felt like you had to take that shot. I mean, we, we can pray and ask God for miracles on this, you know, and, when you, you can always tell there's a conspiracy at foot. When all of a sudden, world-class leading doctors in their fields are having their licenses pulled. Mm -hmm. That are, I mean, board-certified, state-of-the-art. I mean, I mean, oh. even even Dr. Sherry Tenpenny now. Uh, I know her enough that if the if the state board where she where she's licensed through would have let her rebuttal, she would have reams of stuff from mm -hmm. leading because i mean uh I, I was able to be on on one call but uh, these are leading doctors from all over the world saying these are the concerns that we're seeing none of that was considered no as and a matter it, of fact it has caused the fear yeah they're well, attacked. And i think that's what's going on with the um embalmers is I, I think if they a lot of them think if they bring this out they'll lose their jobs they, they come after you you know it's it's like we're living in a mafia state you know, you don't do your thing. You you speak out. You blow the whistle, and and they come after you. It shows you what we've known known has been here for Ever. almost thirty years. Yeah. Um, I mean, we we saw it in action, and so you know, a lot of people haven't had the opportunity we've had to see this firsthand, 
And we've had a long time to just build our faith in that. But that's why I hope our testimony can help people. I mean, we had to believe that God was going to protect our lives. Uh, we had to believe that he was going to um, cleanse our food, you know, stop every attack when they, you know, sabotaged our vehicle, all these things. We had to believe that, and he did it. Yeah. You know, we're, we're discovering there's poison in our foods, there's poison in the air. There's, there's, we, are, we are living, I believe, in a purposefully toxic environment. Just how many things have they knowingly added uh, to the food supply and knowing that uh, that's one of the things I deal with in the Shiner Directive is that the military industrial complex has morphed into everything. It, it includes the agricultural, it in, includes the medical. So the very people that make money when you get sick are fixing your food that make you sick. I mean, it's, it's just never ending. And so we've had to constantly believe God. And I, I don't, I, and there have been times I think we've had uh, this healing crisis because God will tell us, you know, don't eat this for a while or don't do this. And you'll, you'll kind of feel bad when you first do that. It's because your body's saying, finally, I have a chance to start throwing off toxins. Right. And if you believe God, uh, then I, th I think your body's going to throw off more. But the trouble is with our, our society's food, it's hard to find things that aren't aren't tainted in some way you know a lot i've noticed a lot of the things that uh, are over in europe like pasta from italy and things like that they don't have the same problems we do here you know with, with the food because they, they have laws on the books there's a lot of things that we're allowed in our food supply that they it's illegal over there yeah roundup is illegal over there and in fact over there there's a lot they have an alternative to chlorinated water uh uh, aluminum utensils and cookware is illegal over there. I mean, there's just a lot of things. It is. Uh, and in fact, um, just the other day I was reading an article where somebody had moved from the UK over here and, and she was looking at the food and said, the stuff you guys allow in your food has been outlawed for 20 years in Europe. Well, and it, it would uh, confirm why there's so much sickness and disease. Yeah. With that and the pharmaceuticals, my goodness. I mean, I think every day that we're alive, in my opinion, is a miracle from God because there's so much pointed against us. Um, I wanted to mention a couple other things that I'd seen uh, through this last week. Um, you know, the Michigan governor is now asking the public to house illegals, take them into their homes, and... You know, there, I'm sure that there are people that have crossed that border that would not be dangerous. But do you know how many people that have crossed over there that I believe are sent by Hamas, by different things? And so not only could you have a physical danger with that, but think about the spiritual aspect of yeah. what you're letting in your house. And that's what they're going to... I bet they start asking this in all the states. Uh, and, and well, look at the economic. Are the states now prepared to subsidize these households that now are adding more people to their households? And if it will, it will bankrupt the states. Uh, the, the, that's, this this that's is not the plan. feasible. <laughs> it's part of the plan. There, there are so many different things. We have that. Uh, we have, you know, our, our electric grid is so, I mean, we're, we're, at, we're at the edge of what we can do. Uh, there's data and everybody's there, but they pushed electric vehicles, 15 to 20% of Americans go on electric vehicles. It collapses the system. Well, there's now new data out, Mary, that all these data centers, these fusion data centers that they're doing so they can have their technocratic surveillance of everything that you say, you do mm -hmm. and, and everything. Currently it's using up 25% of all electricity produced in America by 2030 because of AI within everything. It's going to be using up 50% of all the electric produced in America, which means it's going to collapse the grid. Yeah, our grids are not up to date, that's for sure. And you, you know, there's, there's no such thing as stupidity when, when you're, you're dealing with things like this. It's planned destruction. It, it definitely is. And I think, I think most people, that's why God's revealing it just one thing after another so people can look. They're going to be shocked. But in my opinion, this is, is a necessary part of the process to get his people where we need to be. Uh, I also saw this morning that there was a California library that was forced, clo um, sorry, forced to close its doors due to drug use, robberies, and public sex. People are going in that library and... 
I don't know where there would be a hidden place where you could do that. I don't but, think they were necessarily trying to hide. But isn't, you know, you usually think in a city that would be a, a pretty decent place and a safe place to go. Um, well, they, they've been, I think, San Francisco and other areas. I mean, you just drive down the street and you see it going on right on the street. And this, uh, and the, I think these are direct results of the plan. This is part of the plan. It's it's not just happenstance. This is part of the plan. And then we got to talk about what's going on in some of the church services. Um, we saw a little clip the other day, and we it was things going on in church. So I just clipped on it real quick to see what it was, and I couldn't Mortified. believe it. I couldn't believe it. They had a church service, and they had a person there dressed up like Garth Brooks, and he was singing, "I've got friends in low places." And guys, that was the Sunday morning worship service. Oh, I didn't even catch when when it was. I just I just was so watching. I thought that can't be in a church. That can't be that and they're song. All, they're all out there with glow sticks waving uh, along with because it music. talks about the whiskey takes my blues, blues away, away or something like that. And I thought, how could that ever be? How would you ever think that's appropriate in in a service? And then there was another one we saw. And this one got me worse. It was a. Uh, I guess it was the pastor or some somebody in there. It was the pastor going back and forth on this big ball wrecking on ball. a chain, and and they had that song by Miley, Miley Cyrus, Cyrus like a wrecking ball. And I knew I'd heard some controversy about that, but I didn't pay a whole lot of attention because I I believe that girl, I believe Miley Cyrus is a definite programmed multiple. She was prepared to be a beta, yeah. prepared to be an entertainer. Brought to you by Disney Incorporated. I mean, this this and in fact her dad's come out and said that they have destroyed his daughter. But they said on uh, on Wikipedia that it says that in her video when she did that song, she didn't have any clothes on when she's swinging on that wrecking ball. Why in the world would somebody think that could be appropriate in there? These are these are like these are so grieving to me. I'm thinking God, are these churches just going to be destroyed? What in the world is coming? Well, then you have the one with the Super Bowl. And I don't know if you have that in your notes or not. But they, I didn't. I, the, I saw was, something the, about it. The husband it. and wife team, and they're out there. And they're wearing, you know, one's wearing whatever it was, and one, the other one, Kansas City. And when, when the adults came into the auditorium, they, were, they did it like it was a football stadium. So you got a glass of beer. Real beer. All the adults got a glass of beer when they came into the into the thing. Are you sure? Yes. Is this it? this is this has been documented. Then, oh. then they they have like a huddle and stuff, and the wife gets over like she's going to uh, kick a foot a goal, and they have like a little goal post set up. She kicks a Bible oh across my. the platform. Uh, I know when I mean that really ticked me off. I'm thinking that that is to the point of being sacrilegious. Well, you know, they there's always been a debate on you know, like whether you could even mark in your Bible and things like that. And I don't think there's any problem with that. I think it highlights and, and trying to put little notes in will help you remember what you've studied before. But but I do believe that we need to show respect for the yes. Word of God. So there there's another thing. And, oh, and it, my it word, just, It's just know. getting worse. We're seeing, and I'm with, with, and with other groups, uh, with the, we saw one here a couple of weeks ago where this one guy was leading praise and worship, and he was, I mean, he, he, had, he had a case of Elvis Pelvis, you know what I mean? And this stuff going on during a church service. Oh, we're, we're, we're getting to the place where we're going to see what David Wilkerson, David Wilkerson warned Wilkerson us said. about a long time ago. Mm. And uh, one pastor, and I don't necessarily agree with all his positions that was kind of, com- he, he, said, he said, this is not a church, it's a goat farm. And, and I, I thought that is the most apropos thing. You got, you got a goat pastor and you're leading a goat congregation. I remember when uh, one of the stories I heard um, about David Wilkerson is he he was in a service somewhere and they started doing you know what I call rock music up on the stage and and he I think he said he just got down on the floor and said oh the Holy Spirit is grieved and I think that's what we're seeing and I and. What the grievous part to me is that the people can't sense that. Yeah. I, I was grieved just watching it. Can you imagine being in that atmosphere? Well, you know, and before the we recorded a Kingdom War Room yesterday, and before we started recording, you know, Mike and I were talking about this, and he said there's some of these situations. He said, you know nobody's saved in that church because he said even as a pastor, he said even as a newborn Christian would have been so grieved they would have got up and walked out. I can't imagine even in my my messed up, crazy days in a church. I can't imagine. 
even thinking about something like that. And and I do think we'll see things get worse. I think we're in the in that separation time where God's mm-hmm. moving the remnant out away from you know and as we we think as i was thinking about this this morning there's a scripture that paul's dealing with a situation that even some of the eldership and stuff got up and left the fellowship they they had left the saints god either whether they went back into pay since it was most likely a gentile church he was writing to that they went back into paganism and he makes this statement he, he said they left us so that we would know they were not of us uh-huh. And guys, we're seeing that today, that there are a lot of churches that are not churches. There are a lot of ministers that are not ministers of God. And it's becoming evident by their fruit, you will know them. Yeah, used to, you know, I don't think people would have would have mentioned names and things like that. But I think it's come to the point that, that somebody's going to have to call this out for the young people maybe going into ministries like that. Um. This, this is dangerous. And I think, uh, you know, you've always said what you compromise to keep, you'll always lose. And so I think God has revealed more and more of this evil and trump, trumpeting this. No more compromise. Yeah. No more compromise to fit in. No more compromise to uh, look like we're loving. We can't, because the truth of it is, is, is if somebody's in sin— and we know by what the word says that sin leads to death. It does. So we can't we can't just take a position. Well, I love you, and so I'm not going to say anything about your sin. That's what's wrong. The churches went away from saying you can't sin. <laughs> the Bible commands us: you speak the truth in love, which means that you're kind about it, you're patient about it, you're emphatic about it, and truth never alters. And see what what the world is really looking for is that we believe in something so much that we will live by it and we'll, we will die, die by, by it. it. Yeah. And I, I remember, because we're calling this episode No More Compromise, Mary, what, what, how long ago was that? Because we've been up in Seymour, what, six, seven years now? Something like that, because we've been at 18, least... 18, 2008, 18, 17 is when 17. We, and so for two or three years before we moved to Seymour when we were having services over in Marshfield, I had the banner behind the pulpit, no more compromise, and that Mm -hmm. was our theme. That got it was like God was warning, we've got to get back into the Word of God. Because the world has so infiltrated the church. You see, uh, churches should not be seeker friendly. You better be Holy Spirit friendly. Mm -hmm. You better be Almighty God friendly. You better be truth friendly. Otherwise, you're going to end up hurting goats that are never, ever going to get saved because they're never confronted with truth and mm-hmm. where they are. Right. We, we need men of God that do not fear, that will say, I don't care if I reduce my crowd from 10,000 to 10, I am going to preach the truth. Right. And they, they may reduce to 10, but I guarantee that there will be a remnant come flooding in yeah, on them I, saying we're hungry it. for truth. I believe it. Well, you know, we go back to Rome. Uh, recently, the Pope declared that priests can bless same-sex couples. And he says no marriage. Uh, they're not going to perform marriage ceremonies, but... That that's the logical next step. Yeah, and well, they always have to do these things inter- incrementally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they're they're doing it with firearms. They're doing it with trying to push the church. And and it was President Obama that basically said, "You have freedom of religion inside the four walls of your church, but not in the public square." And that's not what the Constitution says. Mm-hmm. That if I have a faith that's real, I mean. The occult, they're living their faith. When you, when you see the, the, all the different parades and different protests, the witches are living their faith in the public square, just not the church. They're, they, they're, they're trying to push us in. And we have, if, if, if my faith in God is real, you cannot compartmentalize it. This is the mistake that the Gentile church has done, that we have tried to make our Christianity almost like those little uh, trays. Remember when you were in elementary school and they had, you know, your, fr- your fruit goes here, your sandwich goes here, oh, and there's lunch. little ridges yeah. so, that, uh, so that maybe the juice off of your fruit cocktail won't get on your sandwich. 
We try to do life like that, and there's this little bitty compartment up here on the far right that we try to put religion, that this is our relationship with God. And I've heard, I've heard people say, you know, business is business and church is church. No, it's not. If, if, the, if your faith does not control your household, if your faith does not control your business, you are disgracing God. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. And, and I've grieved so much because I know in the past I, I brought reproach on the name of Jesus. Because, uh, you know, I was telling people, yeah, I, I was saved. Uh, yeah, I was filled with the Holy Spirit, and I can't get myself out of there. <laughs> you know, it was just, it was just yeah. a horrible representation you know, may, because my life, by the fruit of my life, I was looking like God wasn't powerful enough to do anything in it. When it was, it was up to me. Yeah. It was my actions. It was what was done to me, and I had to, I had to seek God, and He showed me the way out. And and I think in the situation we're in, it's almost like the visitation I think that you had with God when God came and set you free of that depression. If we will cry out for his great namesake. You see, this, what, what, we're, what we're talking about is not the reputation of Mike Lake. It's not the reputation of Mary Lake. It's not the reputation of the, the people that are listening to us. We're talking about the reputation of Jesus. That's it. We're talking about the reputation of the integrity of the Word of God. It's, it's one of the top ten commandments. Do not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. And what that means is when, when the priest would say the ironic prayer on the people, they were... They were ba- it was basically releasing the spirit of adoption. This what exact, it's like an Old Testament version of what happens in the new birth. I, I now bear his name. Guys, how I act, what I do, either brings reproach on the name of Jesus, or people look and say, that person reverences God because he controls who he is or she controls what she does based upon who Jesus is. And he has all the power. Yes. But we have to make the way for that word to be able to work. Yeah. And we can't we can't have be demonized. We can't open the door to all these things. I just saw uh, an article and this was one of the most bizarre things I'd ever seen. It was science was saying that a man transitioning to a woman can take hormones and I guess create glands where they can uh, feed a baby is what they were saying. And they said that that milk is as good as a mother's milk. Now they have to take all kinds of drugs to get that to happen. And so, so you know, like to, like, can you imagine like taking this statement right here and putting it back in 1950? And, and, and people would have, you know, people would have yeah. said, there's no way that would go on. There's, and so no, there's no way they would tolerate that going on. And so let's say that you, that that you look at this and and you're awakened out of the of this coma we've all been put in and you would say that sounds insane. Well, one of the things that they haven't done uh, okay, let's say you can do that. What is the effect that all those hormones and everything that you're putting in that person how is that going to affect that well, baby? That that was what I, my second point was. Um, so what about if you're interested in the health of babies? Wouldn't you immediately say, oh, my word, what would this do to a baby because of all the... And they might say, well, that won't do anything, but we already have evidence. They, they, now, I think in many states they have outlawed it, but there was a hormone that because it takes cows, to, I think it's two years, they have to be two years old before they start producing milk. They developed a hormone that that cow would start producing milk at age one, now, it would also shorten the, the cow's life because it, it just simply got wore out. But the side effect was, Mary, we had girls as young as seven years old begin to enter into puberty because that hormone was being transferred into the milk products that the girls were eating. You see, there's, they eventually, I mean, they're, they're going to, when, when, I, when I read what transhumanists want to do, it is the most frightening Frankenstein garbage I have ever mm-hmm. seen in my life. And, and these people are being boisterous about it. Uh, they, and and uh, some of them, it's, it's almost they're devious because it's like, we're going to create 500 new ways of, of having sex because we're going to create new organs. And I mean, just some of the weirdest stuff. And I'm thinking, on what planet? Would this even be acceptable? Yet yeah, they're they're planning on, on on having all this, and the same ones that are wanting this, all all this other stuff 
as incremental steps to the real plan of totally marring the image of God within humanity. Is, is the it, goal. It is. It, it totally is. And, and they've made such strides in it. Um, you know, I believe that more and more Catholics are going to stop following what the Pope says. I believe yes. we're going to see a great um, coming out of the Catholic Church. I think that's yeah. part of what we're getting ready to see. And I think it's a really good point of study for us. Because what's going on right now where the Pope has said, okay, you can bless the same-sex couples, and then the next transition will be, okay, we're going to go ahead and okay marriages. You can see how all the way back the Catholic Church has been a perfect vehicle to slowly put you into compromise. And you can see this by the um, pattern of getting us to do things contrary to the Bible. What You know, you can't look at like St. Valentine's Day, all the things that, that the Catholics have said, okay, we're going to put a, a saint's name on this and we're going to sanctify. That, that was done on purpose to get people doing things that are contrary to what the Word of God is. Most people I know, and uh, I know a lot of people disagree with me on this, but what, what would be the purpose of that outside of making a whole lot of money and stuff? Why, why would you even mess with something like that? Well, we, we fund the Illuminati anyway. I mean, that's the, the, between Halloween and Christmas, and it, it's but all it's, about it's that. But it's to get, to, in my opinion, it's to get us in, in this cycle. That's opposite of God's. And totally contrary to what God tells us to do. And when, when you look at the, the mystery religions historically have been adaptic. They're very adaptive, okay? Uh, in one culture, it's Apollo. In another culture, it's Mithra. But it, it's the same threads over and over, over again. And, over. and when the Catholic Church, they, they, they did not convert the soul because they did not preach the gospel. You can take a pagan, sprinkle water on him, and then he's looking at the symbols and everything you're using, and he's saying, that's still my religion with just different names on it. I still remember when my niece started to, to college, and she took, a, took a, a course. And she came to me one day, and she said, you just wouldn't believe how all of these, these other things line up with Jesus. I mean, like they – see, that's a point for, for the secular people – to make them stop believing in Jesus. Yeah. Say, look, this is just another version of, of all these things. Constantine even confused Jesus with Mithra. It was supposedly after his conversion. Now, he did not see a cross. He saw an ink, and there's, there's evidence for that. But after that is when he coined a coin, Solus and Victor and Mithra, okay? He, he was still putting pagan things, and he, can, he thought Jesus was just simply another version of Mithra, and he stayed a Mithra worshiper because it, he needed to have the Roman soldiers on his side, and that was their god. And so he just, because what, what the occult does is it comes in the mystery religions, and it just puts a veneer of whatever that culture is. So as they, as they moved out of Rome and began to move across, the first thing they did is they renamed all of the pagan gods of Rome by Christian names. Saturn. Jupiter, I mean, Jupiter, that statue of Jupiter down there at the Vatican, they call St. Peter. No, it's not. It, it's, you know, it's like a 4,000-year-old statue. Do the math, okay? And as long as that's there and being venerated, the, 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 uh, the principality behind Jupiter, does. you could call him Fanny Foo Foo. He doesn't care as long as he gets adoration because he draws power from that. They don't care what you call Mary as long as you call her the queen of heaven, because that's another deity. And just over and over and over, as they, as they swept through Europe, they just simply amalgamated, what gods are you guys serving? Now, you guys can still do it. We're going to Christianize it. We're going to sanitize it, where you can't have your orgies around you. You're not sacrificing children to it anymore, but you can still do it. It's just it's this saint or this saint or this saint. That's what they, that has, what they have always been doing. And so it... Christianity did not conquer paganism at the formation of the Roman Catholic Church. Christianity was swallowed up and polluted. Yeah, it's a pollution. You know, there's a biblical way of doing it, 
and then there's the mystery religions way. Yes. And and we've we've fallen. They I think they figured out, you know, we we can't just present this as it is because you know the the I think the early Christians that that came to America for religious freedom, I think I think they uh they would have have seen it, and I think they did some of them. But I think as time went on, they thought, "Let's just pretty it up. Let's just let people think, oh, this this doesn't hurt anything. This is just a a really sweet thing." And let's just and but it it all goes back to we're still doing, we're taking on the way of the pagans. Yeah, and what's interesting, you know, there was a time in America that celebration of Christmas was outlawed. No no self restricting Protestant or Baptist would ever do it. But here's the problem, Mary. When you don't do the feast of God, and so you give them no alternative, this other stuff starts looking really attractive. And I remember us watching a documentary on the, it was a secular one on the history of Christmas, and they were point blank. They said the reason that Protestant churches begin to slowly to adopt Christmas celebration was out of fear that all their parishioners would go back to, into Catholicism. It, was, it, it wasn't a biblical revelation. It was out of fear and because they didn't give the alternative. When, when you do the feast right, and everybody's always, you know, well, how, do, you know how do you guys do it? Make sure that it's Christ-centric. That's it. That's because it's all thing. about him. Uh, the spring feast is about what the first time he came. The fall feasts are about the second time he comes. And we're right now, we're in Shavuot. But let me tell you something. We're in late, late, late summer. Okay, this thing is about ready to wrap up. And Boy, it is. It's getting closer and closer. I think most people, most Christians are saying, hey, this is can't get any more evil than this. Oh, yeah, it can. And, and so Jesus is just, it's on the doorstep. But I think people are going to be shocked um, because I, I, I don't think most people have a clue of the evil that's been going on. You know, one thing that, that I believe happened with all my heart, um, even involving me, was I think that the occult years ago, started taking embryos that were formed from two people and having a surrogate carry them. And you would think, well, why, why would they do that? Was there infertility? I don't know if that might have been a part, but I can tell you what the end goal was, is because they wanted a triangle. Mm-hmm. They needed a structure um, to work through. Okay, now let me tell you what, what they did after that. <laughs> Um, I believe that this involves a lot of things with DNA, probably a lot of things I don't understand. But uh, they wanted to, like you take a triangle, and and you can make all kinds of geometric shapes. We know that they use the, the hexagram, the pentagram. Okay, so they had a goal because of these Nephilim, and the Nephilim needed a power base that they formed structures using people. And I've, I've mentioned this before. I call them point men. Um, and they, and they, they are on the points of a structure that is built above so that it can house the entity. Um, That's why a lot of times you'll see witches that will make a triangle with where they're at in yeah, a service. And, and there's, there are times that when, um, and I saw this in Dixon, there were some people there that I knew were in the occult, absolutely 100%. They showed themselves. And, and they, they would start getting really, it, it was like they were even getting taller, taller and bigger. And, and there's always been this, um, this thought of if you can um, enlarge your boundaries as a person, you can hold a, a bigger entity. But these, these things are huge. And so now imagine this. Imagine if they can get this done. And they get a family, and, and the family's on, and, and they've been connected to the occult in some way, and those family members are standing on a pentagram or a hexagram. Okay, so they use all those individuals and, and all the perversion that would be involved in that to house these entities, making, making them not only superior a, above in an area, if they have, have a, like a, what would you call it, like a regional sp- territorial spirit mm-hmm. or something. Okay, but then they, they can use every one of those people. 
Yeah, because there's a, there's a hermetic principle as above, so below, and so you're you're doing that to line up with things. But I think what they have also found out, you know, we back when we were first starting studying this back in the '90s, uh, there were uh, reports of some of the you know, practitioners in the Illuminati that were trying to get to the place where they could house a principality. I can't and do it. no, they can't do it. It's too much energy. That they literally said they would, would they would spontaneously combust. Okay, but let's t- let's say you take a, a lower, like whether it may be like a ruler or something that's less power, but you distribute it that power among five people that are networked, and which so, is what you're talking about. Right, they're networked, and and that's one of the things that I have noticed that I, I wouldn't even know how to address it. The, the thing about the structure is I, I've been asking God for years since I've, I've seen how they do this to forgive the sins that have created this structure because it's, it would have to be untold rituals and things to get this established for this thing to have be able to mm-hmm. house it in it. And so I've been, I've been doing that and asking God, um, you know, to, to break apart the structures, but... I don't go much beyond that because I think that's part of the reason that people have said, God, where's your judgment? Where's your judgment? It's because people have been put on these points. And I don't even want to see what would happen if... <laughs> I think God's getting ready to deal, especially if they because try to it, infiltrate where God's really moving. He's going to say, I've had enough. Can you imagine if you were hooked to that? And I even think it's got to do... I don't know that I wasn't hooked to one. Um because in 2005, when you know all the people came after me, and I I went in that hotel where they were to try to save the kids was my my hope. Um, that that was I knew the way that I was able to determine what was going on is is God let me see the part of me that was named Star. I think it has something to do with satellites. Starlink. I I know that this it's hard to believe, but I, I actually think that, that those are the parts of the and now um God was so wonderful to me to just use use me to pray over those kids and things. And I even had a, a confirmation. Do you remember I told that during that time when I was going around Springfield, just going around singing praises and praying over that place and asking God to stop any child from being hurt? What was chasing me were white vans, and we heard unmarked white vans. Yeah, we heard uh, a man that was um, satanic ritual survivor, and he he said that that was the white vans that the kids would they'd bring the kids in, and he said it was a network all over the nation. So I guess that's something we can kind of look for, you know, if if and pray over if we see a white van, just pray and say, Father, if there's anything going on there with. And it's so easy because white vans are primarily. The color of most commercial vans, right? And, and so it, it, it's all about stealth and blending uh-huh, in. It is, and so anyway, that I'm getting back to my point is, I think this is linked to things we can't even imagine. I think it's got to do with satellites. I think it's got to do with technology beyond what we know, and you know, I have sit back and I've thought, okay, there's a real possibility that family could be hooked to this. There's there's another family over here could be hooked to that, and. In my opinion, it would take such a group of counselors and and deliverance ministers to work with that, so that you don't harm one of those people. See, see, let's say you. you but you, they've, they've got to want to come out and be free, or, or you're you're spinning your wheels. Anyway. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. And yeah. how would you get that many people, especially if the children are grown? How would you get them all to say, "Okay, we are going to unilaterally um, pray these prayers," and 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 I think that there's a point. When I think God's just going to take the control off of it, I think, but, but I think, I think so it's too. been His mercy that stopped it. And, and I, uh, I think those that are willfully doing it, we've had many prophets probably for the last decade, and they they would keep saying there's going to be Ananias and Sapphira's mm-hmm. in the churches, and I kept on okay, I need to be able to in my in my prophetic understanding, I need to be able to have a a uh, slot for that to fit in. Well, if you have, let's say you have a group that are knowingly, I mean, it's not back. Part, knowingly come in to stop God from moving when God begins to pour revival. We're getting ready to enter into a day that God is going to judge them mm-hmm. on the spot. And most most church members won't. It's just like 
these these three or four adults just dropped over dead I in church, and we don't know why. I don't think they're going to understand it. And I think there will be there can be whole families go. And wouldn't it be um, wouldn't it be convenient to bl- to bl- you know blame it on the next pandemic or whatever when it's actually the judgment of God? That way they can obfuscate that God is actually judging things. I think that a person can take them themselves off if they would see oh say something's wrong and they start praying. I think they could move mm-hmm. themselves off. But I'll tell you what I think I've I've witnessed, at least it looks that way to me. Is then they find another family member to take the place. Yeah, they do. And and so I think that you could take. But as far as like dealing with all the people on the points, I'm, I've just been praying and say, God, reveal this to counselors, reveal it to deliverance ministers, show them how to do it. Yeah, because you basically, you know, if you have five people, you'd have, or six people, you'd have to have five or six teams ministering to each one. And pray, I mean, big prayer, because now this is not a little thing. No, it's not. You're, you're dealing with a high level entity here. That they've been hooked to, and I mean, <clears throat> and and this is just the tip of the iceberg. You know, we, the, the that's apostle, what I'm trying to tell people. <laughs> the apostle Paul said, you know, in the last days there will be this great falling away, and I think it's happened in two stages. We had a lot of those that have left church, okay, but one of the things that uh, I wasn't prepared for was that we have a lot of churches that have left, but they're still meeting. We we have a lot of things that look like churches. They don't act like churches, but they look like churches that are the most prosperous because Babylon is funding them. And, and you know, my, we need to, when we see a man or woman of God that refuses to compromise the word, now they may not have all the truth, but I mean it's Christ and him crucified and the integrity of the word of God and that sin is sin and that walking with God right. requires us to work, to walk that narrow path. Fear of the Lord. Well, then the fear of the Lord is there. We need to honor those people. We, we, we need to, because the Bible says that, that a, an elder that has ruled well should receive double honor. And yet we're not doing that. We, and I, I think that in, in the days ahead, Mary, that although we're all still growing, we're all still learning, you know, Mike and I were talking yesterday about, you know, he, at one time he had, you know, those banker boxes like we're using to pack stuff. He had like 30 or 40 of those full of notes that he threw away because they had simply moved in place. And he was grieving over, they said, all those notes I lost. And the Holy Spirit said, don't worry about it. Because that was a word that was then. He said, but if you would do it now, it'd be deeper because you grow. Okay. We have a lot of ministers that are established in truth and they still got some things to grow into. But I, I think they're in, in the days ahead, they're going to be treated with honor because they refused to to uh, compromise yeah, with they Babylon. Didn't bow their knee. Now that there's some things that God still may need to correct uh, some of their traditions that we need to kind of throw out. But they the, about the the virgin birth, uh, the resurrection of the dead, the, the, the salvation is only by the shed blood of Jesus, and I mean very uh, the the core of the faith that they have refused to compromise on. I think in the days ahead with where we're headed, God is not only going to honor them, but the body is going to honor them because they're going to be worth their weight in gold compared to everything else yeah. that's going on. Well, you know, the, the enemy knows <clears throat> the power of agreement. Yes. And they, and they use that. Um, you know, when uh, witches usually fight each other because there's usually some kind of competition for power and things like that. But do you remember when they were all coming against President Trump to curse him? Worldwide. And so, so you had all these witches that probably hated each other, but they were willing to come together and join together to curse President Trump. Now, look at what happened. Do you think that can have an impact? And we, we have the Democratic Party. Every, everything that he's being sued for, you have a Democratic judge, you have Democratic mm-hmm. attorneys, and I mean, it's and so they they have worked in concert because their work is the final stage of that of that cursing. Well, what do you think would happen if you could get the remnant of God all in one accord? Yes, you know that's that's what we're working toward. But I'll, I'll tell you, we're going to have to move slowly because you don't want to yoke, you don't want to yoke with one of these families that you can't even see that they've been put on one of yeah. these stars or a ministry where we may have leadership that that's why. Because what what would happen is if you have a church and one of these families comes in that's in the occult, and you can't see any of this, is that whatever that entity is that, that they have made a house for, they have formed a house for, 
that would that would be attacking every person there. That's why you and I have looked back and seen, oh, we've you know we'd we'd hear about people, um, and they they would go into church, and all of a sudden everybody starts dying. There's just one catastrophe out of, of another because who would think about a power source like that being in? Yeah. I used to for you know years ago when we were having people and we were having services, um, back even in when we were in Marshfield and even before when we had a little a, just a little classroom uh, when we'd moved everything up to Marshfield, um, you just you sit there and you just constantly have to say prayers because they formed these triangles of battle. Yeah, and and it just. We, we had one person show up that we didn't even know they were coming, but we felt them a half hour before they got mm-hmm. there. I mean, and, and now if you just talk to that person, they didn't say anything that would make you think there's something, you know, going on, you would, you would have, to, you'd have to discern. And then, you, then somebody would say that you were, how could you say something like this? That's why usually I didn't even do it. I'd just sit there and I'd just pray because I'd think that's the perfect thing they want you to, to say is accuse somebody of something. You know, then they'd go out of there. And, and I, I think there's a reason why, like when the anti-Nicene fathers took Trulian, mm-hmm. one of the things he would do after you professed faith in Christ, you had to walk it for two years and prove to that community that you are really a believer and that you've given up paganism before they'd even baptize you. Yeah, because, see, you don't, you don't want to join with that in one accord. No. And so we've got to ask God to clear a path, one of the things, give us discernment, and we've got to um, stop the cycle that Satan has done in our homes because he's, he's done cycles to try to press men down so that mm-hmm. they won't take their authority. And to usually, you know, get get the women so discouraged and stuff that they they'll step out of line, and so it's a cycle that that's and and we've got to teach men. That was one of the first things God told me. And it was teaching me as I came out was Luke ten nineteen about um, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you, hurt you. And Matthew sixteen. Talking about the binding and loosing, um, and we, I think I think we need to realize that God's system is a balanced patriarchal system. Mm-hmm. Okay, now back when and this is going all the way back to the eighties when I was first putting together everything for the seminary and stuff, uh, I got in loads of catalogs from both secular uh, universities and different things. And this is, you know, when you look at back at the eighties, the whole women's live movement was really. Mm-hmm beginning to push forward and what I began to see in secular university catalogs and it was under women empowerment type of they were teaching them witchcraft of how to use witchcraft to make males like within a corporation the home or whatever look weak make bad decisions so that they could begin taking their spots Mm -hmm. and I mean there were college level graduate level courses uh, under women's empowerment you see that the whole the whole women's live movement was uh, sprang out of the occult uh, revel that we had in the 1960s. It sprang out of that, and so everything about our culture was to suppress men. Now there 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 are some that go on the other other end that they take male headship and and too far, way too far, and yeah. end up being dictators. Yeah. And that that is not biblical. That's why I said balanced patriarchal system. Because the, the, the whore of Babylon has to be in ascendancy, okay? She's, she, she's got to take hold in a society. In fact, there's an, I believe it's in Isaiah that it's a curse that if you uh, leave the ways of God, that women and children will lead you. It's a curse because men cannot take the positions that they're supposed to. And when you, you see many, and, and, I, and I'm not putting women down, women have their place. They can move in authority. Oh, my goodness, uh, They yes. can do all this stuff. Yes. But it, it's to be in concert with their husband moving to where things are in balance. And if they're, if they're single, they're under the authority of Jesus. You yes. know? But, but, the, but since that's there, since that's one of the principles, when you are married, that's, that's something that we have to... To look at. But everything in American society puts the male to sleep. It is. Don't get excited about Jesus. Get excited about your football team. Don't well, get excited about Jesus. Like, do this. Remember home improvement, that 
Um, Tim the Tool Man yeah, Taylor. Yeah, that. No, I'm saying the wrong one then. Oh, I guess he was the Tool Man because he had the the wife and the th- kids at home, yeah. didn't he? Okay. Um, in that show, he uh, they made him look like he was absolutely idiot. <laughs> yeah. And and it made her look smart. Yeah. Well, and in all the shows, that's that's how they portray it. Now compare that back to the fifties with shows like Father Knows Best, My Three right. Sons. So it's part of it. I mean, we've got to look at it and say, okay, this has been part of the agenda to destroy the American family. Yes. And so, so my prayer over families is if things are out of order, that God bring order bring in, in miraculous ways, balance. as only you as only you can do, because because if our homes are out of order, we can't gather together. And be in one accord. Yeah. There's a reason why a watchman is called a watchman, not a watchwoman. Okay? It's watchmen. That there are certain things and, and guys, let me let me let me set this into the into the mix here. Your wife is your other half. Okay. Mary and I make a kingdom whole. That there are certain things that I can move in and there are certain things that she can move in. That she is, she has discernment. Like for me, it's it's all about the theology. It's all about this. Women tend to be more intuitive. That they have, their, I think I think God can gift a man with discernment, but I think women naturally, as a yeah. part of their makeup, I because so. they're 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 discerned over the kids and over the household and all these things, theirs is more intact. Okay, uh, and so we we need to listen to one another and realize that we're a team and that, uh, you know, the, we, we go all the way back to the garden in, in Genesis 2. The reason that Adam was take, or Eve was taken from his rib, not from his head to be above him, not from his foot to be below him, but from his rib so that she would find protection underneath his arm and that they, and he was incomplete without her, mm-hmm. okay, so that they could operate as a team. That, that was God's best. And and Mary and I have have learned <laughs> through oh, the hard way. Let me tell you. <laughs> after God hit me in the head for the fiftieth time, of the, okay, this is what you're trying to tell me because there there are times that I have that I tend to be hard headed just a little bit. Mary, bless your heart, I do tend to be hard headed a lot of times, but we're a team that when we function together, it's kingdom best because our gifts flow together there are certain things that i can do you can't do there are certain things that you can do i can't do god didn't create me to do everything because it was not good that man should be alone yeah, it had a help me i had That's a help right. meet and 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 as we flow together now when i stand in my authority over our family and over this ministry it allows your giftings to soar to new heights. Yeah, that's true. And when we pray together, yes. And and I think, especially with what's what we're dealing with, with we're dealing with Nephilim, we're dealing with these big entities that hadn't been around for except for the last hundred years. They've been making their way back. Um, that's why women needed a, hair, a head covering. These are powerful entities, and men have a headship covering and and i i've i think in those early days that's why your health was getting hit so hard mm-hmm. is because you were putting a covering over me to something that had obviously claimed me because i had thought i had felt ever since we got married i thought i was married to somebody else a crazy thought in your head but it'd come in my head every once in a while and i'd think it that's that can't be true i was never married um but i think that's you took hits for me even the the witches, the witches understand that. They will have a They male understand covering. a male covering, even if they, they would choose to have a lesbian life. Yeah. A lot of them will, will have a covering because they know that that's protection for them. Yeah. And so it, it's a matter of returning back to biblical standards. And guys, I mean, the stuff that we talk about is real. We're, we're, not, we're not just being spiritual here and, and trying uh, – uh, none of our, our intention is never to impress you. Our intention is to bring you back to the Word of I God. I think it'd be hard for us to press him, buddy, because we screw up so much. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, well, guys, we, we oh, try I, not to air our dirty laundry, though. <laughs> um, well, I hope. Hello, we don't. welcome to the podcast. Here are the here are the four stupid things I did this week, and I'm recommending well, don't I, do them. I tell a lot of stupid things I've done just yeah. as a 
as a learning point for people because they they cannot do what I did. That one thing that I could could tell them, you know, is like the the Jezebel spirit that I operated with, um, and and God was so good, you know, like it would be hard for somebody to come to you and say, "Hey, Mary, you got a Jezebel spirit," you know. But He had me watch that teaching after I came out of that depression, and I I recognized myself in what they were saying. Well, when you start crying out for freedom to be free, God will start putting systematically the things in your path mm-hmm. that you need. He will. And what we've got to do is is to be looking for them and not insisting somebody else do it for us. I mean, there may be times God has someone that will come, and I, I remember we you had a prophet that said that God changed your bloodline for a while, and, and we found that was true. And yeah, I think, I believe that's and I think there was did. even anointing in when he said it to even help facilitate some of the things that God was wanting to do. But primarily God says, you're my kid. If you cry out, I'm going to work with you, and I'm going to give you the things, and I'll use people, I'll use books, I'll use teachings, Mm -hmm. but ultimately, you're the one responsible to take a hold of it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, God's not going to beat us over the head. No. Um, And we, but, But the good news is that I can tell you is if you're living in this day and time, you were created to be a spiritual warrior. Yes, God knew what we were going to face. He knew what we were up against. And he said, I will equip you with everything that you need. But here are the things that you have to do, steps you yeah. have to take to be able to reach that. And, and you know, it's obvious right now, obvious, God is showing us what's here. Yes. He's showing us what's been going on for many decades that nobody even had a clue about. You know, just the, just those people like Alex Jones and, and the ones that were looking behind uh, the closed doors and seeing what was really going on, those that were in, uh, going for jobs in corporations that would walk in, uh, you know, accidentally walk in a door and there's a group of the people they're working with, you know, doing a ritual. I mean, all these things, there have been those people, and, and God, thank you for them. Yes. Because that gave us something to at least, okay, this is going on, right? Um, but... But in this process, we have to be willing to not compromise. It's going to be one of the hardest things we all do is to say, I I am not going to do anything that if there's even a remote chance that this is is something that God's told us not to do, maybe a, you know, I I heard a really good preacher um, one day that was, had a good sermon stuff, but talked about how their family had watched Frozen and gave some kind of example. And I thought... At this point in time, you're watching that Disney movie. I mean, I mean, there. How many Christians are still watching Disney? Yeah. That I mean, it's just opening the door wide. And I can tell you, I had every everything that was bad out there that the enemy was was prompting people to do. I did. You know. I did it all. I got my kids the wrong things. I, I let them watch horrible movies. I did it all. That's why I can stand and say, you don't want to see the results of this. You don't want to know what, what the enemy can do with these things. You know, what's, what's interesting, when Tom Horn was alive, he knew the right tokens to pass for a 33rd degree Mason. And he actually went to Disney World where they have, in both Disney World and Disneyland, they have a 33 club which are reserved for very powerful, very rich 33rd degree Masons. And he got, in, he got into the club because he knew the tokens to use and got to talking to these guys. And one, the, what he realized is, you know, they can say, well, you know, they had to use witches and fairies and all this to show the conflict between good and evil. No, that was his religion. Mm-hmm. And so he embedded his religion and the fairies and, the, and everything else into it and he said, when I talked to the men that were there, uh, he said, that was their belief system. And they knew that they were using the cartoons to propagate that. Of course they were. And to, and to promote it among the kids. I did find something out, guys. I had a woman that emailed me that her two daughters had uh, worked at Disney World. And she said that there's an underground to Disney World that I guess everybody knows about. It's where they the actors go in and go up and all these different things. But she said that they said at the entrance of the underground that there's a fence with razor wire. Across the top of it. So There you go. There's my razor wire. So I, I shouldn't have been underground. 
There's probably more underground than there is above ground. Oh, I, I would say so. Yeah. And there may even be a connection to that underground and someplace else. Well, that they could, they could take you through. Because I think there's through. a near, for, near military base or something. I can't remember how close it is. I looked one time. Um, but I, I, but I, that was the first confirmation I've ever got from anybody that, okay, I have looked up and seen that fence with razor wire, and I guess I thought it was all, all the way around it or something, or else I was taken in the front, and then they took me back around, and I looked up. I don't remember, don't but, know, but uh, we, we do know there are military bases and there are facilities, Mary. Um, I mean, even with uh, this is a part of food distribution because it's easier to keep food cold underground. We have one of those up there that there are hundreds of miles of road connecting to that to other facilities. And I mean, that's that's mm-hmm. just standard. And that doesn't include the ones that, that we have. Uh, we have tunneling systems with magnetic hyperloop trains. That you can go from Washington D.C. and be in, in San Francisco within a matter of a couple hours. I mean, they'll travel seven, eight hundred miles an hour, far faster because I mean, I mean uh, when you look at a magnetic rail in a hyperloop, there's no friction. Mm. Uh, those kind of systems and, and deep military and, and all the deep underground military bases are connected with systems, and so uh, and even with what's uh, let's say around NORAD in Colorado. There are acres and acres and acres of facilities that are deep underground and all connected. So that uh, you don't, I mean, it, it's not like we're having to use our sci-fi mind Mm-mm. to try to connect all this stuff. And this stuff's real and, and going on. But believers, what we, need, what we need to connect to, there's more to reality than what you've been told. That there's, there is more compromise in the church that... that I think saints in the past will look at that and say, you're apostate. You are absolutely apostate. And we as individuals need to say, as for me and my house, you see, it's, it's not your pastor, it's not the church you go to, it's not your denomination. The Bible takes it with what Joshua said when he went into the promised land. As for me and my house, we're going to serve God. That's the attitude that you got to have. You know, Mary and I were just talking the other day, and I remember when she first came out, and, of course, we didn't even have the Internet back then, but there were a lot. We came had, out of depression. I don't want anybody can, listening can, to me. Come like. out of depression, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, that there was a lot of good, solid, fiery, Holy Spirit-filled preaching mm-hmm. that was available that in those subjects was extremely accurate that she fed on that gave her, that taught her her authority in Christ, taught her who she was in mm-hmm. Christ. And I told her, I said, you know, we because, I mean, we cruise <laughs> through YouTube looking for stuff worth watching. And a lot of it, a lot of it is just junk. Now, every once in a while, we, we run across a really gem that we enjoy. Uh, but And I'm thinking, somebody coming out today, how hard is it going to be to find that level of anointed teaching that's solely based on the Word of God that can strengthen the soul. Unless they, they just pray and ask God to take them there. Yeah. And, that, and then God would do that. He would honor their prayer. And but you know, th- a lot of those, those preachers that I listened to in those early years, I watched things happen. And I watched some of them get tattoos. And I have watched things go downhill ever since. And, and there's one that's actually preaching against what he preached back in the 90s. Now... And so it's, 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 I mean, we're, we're, we're at that state. That's why, you know, These people things say. things can affect you. They that, really can. And, uh, you know, and, and of course with a fight with uh, some of uh, uh, Lester Summerall's grandchildren, none of his stuff is available today, which is really tragic because if there was ever a time to need it, it's now. And uh, we had one of our listeners actually send us a care box. I guess one of their family members had passed away, and they had a bunch of Lester Summerall stuff. And so they, yes, they sent it to us. Oh, Thank that you. that was a precious gift. Thank you so much. I felt like a kid in a candy store oh, when that showed goodness. up. Oh, my goodness. What a wonderful addition to the library. And, and so we're, I mean, we're, some of these things are precious. That's why I tell people, you know, sometimes you need to go back and read. If I want to get deep, I go back at least 100 years and read some of the saints of God. We're going to have to. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we we really are. Um, we're going to have to close some wells that have been opened, and we're going to have to reopen the old wells. Yeah, some some of them are tainted wells. Mm-hmm. They're they're wells that have they've made Kool Aid in, if you know what I mean. 
And guys, we, we, we need to go back and, and just cry out for truth. Well, and God's so faithful, I'll tell you, if you cry out, he will make a way. Yes, he will. Well, Father, we come before you. And Father, I ask that within the remnant, you would release an insatiable appetite for truth, for your word. Father, that you would give us discernment to discern the spirit of truth and the spirit of error, that we would reject error. In fact, right now, Father, we stand in our authority and over each one of us, we bind to us the spirit of truth because we choose to be led by truth and we cast from us and reject the spirit of error right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we say as for me and my house, we're going to serve Jesus. Yes, we will. And that we're going to be true to your word. We're going to be true to the kingdom. We are going to be kingdom-minded, realizing that we are the ultimate counterculture in the world. And that as we live for you with our whole hearts, we're going to see the book of Acts again in this day. We're going to see the miracles. We're going to, real miracles. We're going to see lives transformed. Not because they're joining a club, because they went to the altar and they repented of their sins and they made sure that everything in their life was covered by the blood of Jesus. And they are going to raise up as that new man or woman promised in the word of God. They become a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all yes. things have become new. Father, we're going to see true conversions yes. again. We we're going to see people it. filled we with your Holy it, Spirit Father. again. We're going to see the fire of God descend yes. on your remnant again, Father God. Father, we're going to see true revival that is going to be released in the middle of Babylon. And Father, we thank you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.